So in today's real estate exam prep video, I'm going to discuss two key real estate terms that you have to know for your real estate exam. And quite honestly, for whatever reason, many students, they struggle with these two concepts. And so what I want to do is make sure that you understand the differences between the two. That can be the difference between you missing one or two questions on your real estate exam. They are timeshares and vacation licenses. So I'm going to start with a timeshare first. What is a timeshare? Well, first of all, any type of property can be designated as a timeshare, but typically we see timeshares in those really popular vacation areas like Key West, Myrtle Beach, uh, Hawaii, those type of deals. And, and it can be typically a condo or even a single family home. Like in Florida, it's very common to see single family homes on the beach or single family homes in Hawaii to be designated as a timeshare. Now, the purchaser is buying an interval ownership in that piece of property. And they are deeded, they are given a deed for fee simple title. And then they have what's called tenants in common ownership with all the other owners. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Let's say that I own a single family home on the beach and I decide to turn this into a timeshare. And I want one week out of the 52 weeks for myself. And I'm going to designate two weeks out of the 52 weeks as maintenance weeks. So that means I have 49 weeks left over that I can sell. So I'm going to go out and seek 49 individual owners that's going to purchase one week. And let me show you what that would look like. So I'm going to go out, as you can see on your screen here, how I have the schedule set up. I'm going to go out and seek 49 people to buy one week at a time. And so let's say that I get Sally Smith to, to buy week one, which is January 1st to January 7th. Week two, Jim Jones buys. Week three, Tim Tush buys. Week four, Jerry O'Neill buys. And then week five, I designate as a maintenance week. Now, what that means is all of those four people that have purchased a week or an interval ownership, they have fee simple title in that single family uh, property on the beach with me. And then together, collectively, we hold what's called tenants in common. And I'm not going to explain what tenants in common is in this video, but if you want to uh, research that a little further, I'm going to leave a link right up here in the upper right hand corner that talks about uh, tenants in common. All right. So fee simple ownership and tenants in common with all the other owners. Now, again, typically timeshares are sold in a one or two week interval or time period with one week being the most common. And then, as I mentioned, usually two or three weeks out of the 52 week year is designated for maintenance for the unit. Now, what can the owner do with their one week? Now, remember, Sally Smith bought week one, January 1st through January 7th. What can Sally Smith do with that week? Well, she can, she can use that week for herself. She can give it to someone, uh, maybe a relative or a friend, so then they can go down and use that week. She can use it to, uh, maybe uh, very common, if you go to auctions for charities, where people have timeshares and they are giving away their one week interval as an auction item. Uh, Sally can also will it. She can put that timeshare in her will. Uh, she can give it away. Remember, she has fee simple ownership, so she can actually even rent it out to somebody if the terms of that timeshare allow. Right. No. All right, so each owner also pays what's called a due or association due or a condominium regime due or some kind of fee to pay for uh, the expenses and the upkeep of the property. So remember, I'm one owner and there are 49 other owners in our example that I've given you about uh, the single family home on, that I own on the beach that I'm turning into this timeshare. So what I'm gonna do is assess all the other owners a certain amount of money, and this changes every year based on the needs of the property to pay for things like insurance, to pay for care and maintenance and, and gardening services and lawn maintenance and so on and so forth. All right. And then also typically what happens with a timeshare is when I convert the single family home into a timeshare, I'm going to establish some kind of governing body to oversee the operations. It can be a, a, 
you know, I might hire a property management company to do that or a condominium regime or an association or something to that effect that's going to be responsible for collecting those dues and then making sure that all the, the you know, insurance is paid and the maintenance is done, so on and so forth. So the key here with a timeshare is to remember that it's fee simple ownership and then all the owners hold title as tenants in common. So the next key real estate term I wanna discuss is a vacation license. Now, if I'm on the outside looking in, a vacation license looks very much like a timeshare, but there's one distinct difference, and that is there is no fee simple ownership. So using the example on the timeshare, let's say that I own a single family home on the beach, but I don't wanna create a timeshare so what I'm gonna do is sell the same weekly intervals to 49 different people. Because remember, two weeks is reserved for maintenance, one week is mine. So there are 49 weeks available and I'm gonna sell 49 weeks on a vacation license. So if you buy week one, then what that means is I'm guaranteeing you the right to use that property between January 1st and January 7th. It's a guaranteed right to use, but no ownership. So basically I'm renting this property to you for one week and you're gonna sign a vacation license. All right, so these vacation licenses can also be short-term or long-term. They may be year to year. Uh, they may be every three years, rarely, but I have seen some that go out as far as 10 years. So if you sign that vacation license for 10 years, you're on the hook for 10 years, meaning you're going to pay those, the, the, you're going to be responsible to pay that vacation license fee for the next 10 years. Now, now with a vacation license, it's all going to be determined by the terms of what the vacation license has in the agreement. So make sure on a vacation license that you read it just like you would a lease agreement uh, for some other type of property. All right, so just to do a quick recap, remember this is important for your real estate licensing exam. Timeshares, if you buy a timeshare, then you're buying fee simple title into that property and you hold title with all the other fee simple owners as tenants in common. And then a vacation license, you're only purchasing a guaranteed right to use that property for that specified period of time that is listed in the vacation license. There is no fee simple title whatsoever. And those are the two biggest differences. If you're gonna to continue to study, check out this video right here. I think it's gonna help you clarify the whole uh, tenants in common relationship. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Click the little circle to my left. Comments and questions down below, love both of those. All right, that's all I got. I'll see y'all in the next video.